cheated on my wife and left for another guy. She still texts me frequently and cries to me how I'm doing better than her and how it's not fair. To start, I'm 31 male and wife is 28 female. We have two kids, 7 and 5. My wife asked me for a separation August 27, 2020 and she left that day and was apparently living at her mom's. The day after, I get messages from her cousin that she's been cheating on me. Wife claims she never did up to this day. A week after, we met up to do a Zoom meeting on her phone to meet our son's teacher online. She gets a Facebook message saying something like, only a few hours, eggplant emoji, peach emoji, sweat emoji. After the meeting, I asked her if she could explain that, and she said she didn't want to talk about it, and that she deleted the messages already. She said it was a girlfriend of hers, because my wife was going on a date, and apparently, girlfriends get excited for each other and think they're just going to get laid, which I obviously didn't believe at all. I got really upset and told her to leave. Around Thanksgiving, October for us in Canada, she told me she was taking the kids to another city to visit her grandparents, and go swimming for Thanksgiving. She ended up lying, and actually went with our kids and this guy she apparently cheated on me with, and stayed in a hotel. On their drive back, the car engine blew and died. The car she fought me for, and owes almost $12,000 on still, and still makes payments on every couple weeks, this is when I started to believe in karma a little bit more. Between September and November, my wife and I drank together and had intercourse around five or six times. I still wanted her back, and I really wanted to sleep with her. The part that I'm realizing now is that, she's been seeing this guy for a while now. I found pictures of them about a week and a half ago. Ever since I saw those pics and confirmed things, I've stopped talking to her. I just wanted to believe all her lies, even when they were obvious. So, she's cheated on me, left me for him, and was cheating on that guy with me? Just two weeks ago. Before I found out for sure, she came over and we were talking, and she was letting me feel her up and give her a full body massage and everything. Right now, I can't even fathom what's going on in her head. Some other extra facts. The kids are doing well, my apartment is spotless, and I've lost 50 pounds since she left me, 235 pounds down to 185 pounds. She's come to my place a couple times, and has cried to me about how it's so unfair how I'm doing so much better than she is. She's said it's not fair that I'm doing all this now, and not when we were together. She told me she still loved me on Christmas, and bought me Christmas gifts. Not just chunk, but a bottle of sake, because she knows how much I want to visit Japan and like making ramen and such. So, she put thought into it. I don't mean to sound rude either, but she doesn't look very good nowadays either. She's been putting on weight, has gone hard into dopes and drinking. She tells me she cries all the time. She told me she was depressed with me left me thinking it'd be better, but is still depressed and that messes with her. But as we know, happiness comes from within, and she has none. So, if you left me for someone else, at least be happy about it, and make the best of it. She hasn't texted me for 4 days now. This is the longest she hasn't texted me in 4 months. She has told me before, when we were together, that if she ever left, I would fail. When I started a job working in a kitchen, started as dishwasher, she said I would never make any friends. Apparently, she forgot how social and good with people I am. All the waitresses loved me, I moved from dishwasher, to working on the line, and being asked if I'd want a bartend. At the time, I was overweight and my self-worth and confidence were shot, so I didn't take up the bartending. She didn't like how many people, especially the girls, ended up liking me. Throughout the marriage, whenever me and my wife would go out drinking, she would always end up twerking on the wall or the floor, and letting guys videotape her. She flirted with everyone, and even had many of my close friends thinking I wanted a threesome with her. I don't drink often, but one Halloween, I drank too much at a friend's party, ended up passing out and throwing up everywhere. While I was doing that, she was in the bathroom with guys showing her tops off for free coke, and who knows what else. But she convinced me nothing happened, and ended up making me think I'm crazy and everyone was wrong. Basically, gaslighting me. I'm seeing a therapist now, and I'm learning that basically, she just needs attention from external sources non-stop. Getting it from her husband just wasn't enough. I know we all have issues and our marriage wasn't perfect. I know I still love her and care about her, but I won't be a backburner or a second choice. I hate comparing how me and her are doing, but it makes me feel better right now. I have my own place, a dog, happy kids, my own vehicle, money, in university, and even though I feel like complete garbage, I'm going through the emotions so I can fully move on and try to be at peace. Whereas she is living with her mom, 
broken car, no vehicle, asking me for money and living off Serb, Covid money, unhappy, depressed, thought the grass was greener, and it isn't. She is so afraid to be alone with her own thoughts, that she still sleeps with her mom or the kids sometimes. When I have moved on, she will not. I don't know if she will ever move on, because she knows she made a mistake and is stubborn. In the end, I just don't know why she cheated and left, but continues to text me, has had intimacy with me, says how much I'm doing better than her. It boggles the mind. But then again, how can you understand someone who doesn't even understand themselves? I'm doing well, but some weeks I just feel so much hurt. Like she pulled my heart out, shattered it, and banged the other guy on top of the shattered pieces. Anyways, that's the story. There's so much more I can say and background that I could give, but I think this does it. Thanks for reading. Feel free to ask any questions or whatnot. It's a difficult time to get separated, cheated on, and COVID at the same time. Now for the top comments. Clearly when she's faced with a decision, she just takes the easy way, regardless of consequences. You need to do your best to treat her as your child's mother, and nothing more. At least until you feel you are truly over her. Thank you. I agree with you, as I can see things much more clearly now. She is clearly a coward, and has never held herself accountable. I've prolonged my healing process too long, which is why I'm staying out of contact with her for now, unless needed to about the kids. Stop having intercourse with her. Your wife is showing her tops for dope, probably having intercourse too. Do you realize how dangerous that is, the chances of you catching an STD from her? Don't tempt fate when it would ruin your life for craps and giggles. Thank you for this. I never wanted to think of her like this, so I never fully gave thoughts like this a chance, but I realize this is the reality now. We know why she does it. She is a broken person that has unchecked mental health issues that make her decision making poor. But we don't know why you entertain her anymore. You clearly haven't cut her off yet, but you need to if you want to believe you're ready to move on yet. The best advice is go no contact except for the kids. Grey Rock and 180 the hell out of her. Stop letting her in the house. When she wants to talk, cut her off and slash or walk away. She is a cake eater. She wants her cake, a fair partner, and eat it too, domestic life. You're letting her hold on to the dream by even entertaining her. I know you still love her, but you admit you can't share her in your life, and that is exactly what you're doing. She can't give you what you need. Focus on yourself and your needs. And if there are substances and alcoholism involved on her part, protect your children from that. Legally if necessary. They should not be exposed to that. Sure as hell do everything to prevent her from leaving town like that. That is traumatizing for the children. Thanks. I totally agree and I'm putting all of my energy into myself and the kids right now. They are my number one priority. I had to give my head a shake and see things for how they are, so I'm definitely doing no contact right now. Now for the next story. I, 25 male, found out my girlfriend, 25 female, of 5 years was in love with, and cheating on me with my best friend and had intended to leave me. Without getting too in depth into things, I found out and confronted both of them about this, and maybe I'm being too forgiving or too blinded, but I still love her, and truly believe this isn't how she is, so we agreed to try to make our relationship work. The problem comes from the fact that she hasn't decided if we are going to be able to make it work, which is fair, but because of that, she hasn't dedicated as much as I would like to working on fixing things. And as my feelings are starting to calm down, I'm setting harder boundaries on what is acceptable and realistic, which leads to the problem I'm hoping for help on today. Pretty much, she's told me that even if our relationship works out, and can get better, she wants to somehow remain friends with him, even if I don't. And I've made it very clear that if that is an absolute requirement, then it's something we can discuss in the future once trust has been rebuilt and hopefully the friend apologizes as well. But the current issue is that his birthday is coming up, and she wants to message him on his birthday even though we have agreed to no contact. And I'm concerned that if I say hard no, I'll come off as not understanding of whatever feelings are there, and seem too controlling, but I know I'll regret it if I let it happen, because it feels incredibly disrespectful to me that she still wants to do something for this guy, even though she is very aware it will hurt me and our progress. I'm just not sure what to do and if I'm over or under reacting, but I'd appreciate any advice on any of this from people who may have more experience than I do. This is all pretty new to me. Now for the top advice before the little updates. Please respect yourself enough to leave man. It's really not worth it. 
You might be right, it's hard to make that decision though. We both have our issues that led to this, but the weird part is that, after all of this came to light our relationship has gotten better than it has been in a long time in a lot of ways, so it's hard to want to just give that up. Have some self-respect. You get cheated on, and you're letting her call all the shots? She's convinced you it's your fault she cheated, and now she's making up the rules for reconciliation. You need to flip the script. She should be asking you what the rules are for reconciliation. You have to be willing to lose the relationship in order to save it. That's actually a really good point. I've been worried that I might be blinded and being delusional about everything, at first, I know I was overwhelmed with feelings, but now that things are calming down and I'm looking at it more objectively, it's hard to ignore. Staying in contact with him is crap testing dude. Tell her to take her cheating is over to where she belongs. She's forcing you into a sucker's bed. There's a sub here for people trying to stay together after something like this, and even when the wayward jumps through hoops, it rarely works. By her even suggesting such a thing, shows she ain't in the game for your feelings, at all. That's sort of my feelings as well. I was hopeful about this, but honestly now, I'm pretty aware I can't force her to consider my feelings. And if she isn't capable of that, then it isn't really worth it. So I'm just going to have to talk to her and lay it out I guess. Now for the updates. Hey everyone, sorry I stopped being able to keep up with responses. I just want to say thank you to everyone for your responses and advice. I think a lot of it lines up with what I was feeling, but was trying to bury. I've let her know that it's me or him, and even if she were to pick me, which I don't see happening, there would be an incredibly high bar moving forward, which I also don't see working, so it's 99% likely it's over. And I agree with everyone that it's likely for the best. Thanks again for the help, everyone's been great. I really appreciate it, and I'm gonna start rebuilding my ability to trust by trusting all of you. Update 2, we broke up. Feels like crap right now. And having to live with her for a while is going to be really rough. But it feels like it will feel better eventually, I hope. Update 3, sorry I'm not able to respond to every comment, but I feel like I need to give a little bit of an explanation as to why I can't go totally no contact. Pretty much we live together in an apartment with a lease that lasts another 5 months. Neither of us has the income to support getting our own places right now in this city, and I plan on using the time to save money to move to a different state. I am immediately understanding why this is everyone's advice, it feels terrible to live under the same roof. I am considering my options about potentially ending the lease and moving early, but I'm just not sure if it is realistic. The next story is titled. I'm still not okay. So I, 28 Mly, was with my ex, 27 female, for 5 years. We hardly ever fought, and we were seemingly a dynamic duo. That is until February of last year, when I learned she had a secret pen pal who she was seeking attention from, and sending gifts to. At first, I was destroyed by her telling me she kept him a secret, because she was unsure of how I would respond to their friendship. I assured her that if he was just a friend, that I'd be okay with that, just like the rest of her male friends. Fast forward to May of last year. She asked if we could fly him in from several states away, so that he could withdraw from hard substances. I wanted to be sympathetic to that, since her father overdosed and died just as we first started dating. As soon as he got here, she was distant, and she said she just needed her space with him. Then it happened. She took my car, crashed it, with no license mind you, told me she had had enough of me, broke up with me, took everything that we had worked hard for, along with several personal things of mine I had been gifted, and moved in with him across town in under a week. I've been back at my parents house ever since and my self-esteem is basically non-existent. I just wish I could have had the chance to know what I could have done for her, to not have that happen. I feel so drained all the time, and therapy along with medications aren't really helping. I feel like the biggest failure in the world. Can anyone suggest a way to help ease my mind? Now for the top advice. This is a good thing OP. Or rather it will be a good thing. You are free of her. You are free of her taking your time and energy and love. You are free to reconnect with yourself, your family your homies. The likelihood of her living a full and balanced happy life, is very low if this is how she moves through it. You on the other hand, have another opportunity to go and live a life you want and deserve. I can relate with this deeply. 5 years with my ex, I was chumped, twice. Want to talk about feeling like a failure? I went back after she slept and lied for a year about it with her ex. But guess what, I'm 2 years removed from that, in a loving relationship not just with someone new, but myself, 
and I'm grateful for her showing me who she was before I engaged her. This is your life my friend. Grieve and feel the pain, because it's truly the only way you will move through it, but do not dwell. Make sure you remain no contact and start to find your direction again. You will be okay and you will find the light, it just takes time. You now begin the long hard journey back to trusting yourself. Best of luck my friend. You are not alone. He was a D user and you are not. The trash left. Don't cry because it is beginning to smell. Stay strong. Exercise. Go to school. Improve yourself and move on. I've already graduated with two degrees, but I will definitely start to work out. It's just hard to gather the energy to get out of bed still. I appreciate you to no end. Thank you. OP, you've been gifted, you found out who and what she was before you married her. She is a female dog who doesn't deserve to be in your presence. Just curious, how does an addict move to a new city and get a job worthy enough of supporting oneself? Or is the female dog supporting them? Go no contact, and when she wants you back, which she will, tell her to eat manure and die. Now for the last story. I found out last night, when I needed him most, he wasn't there. I do not condone cheating in any sense or for any reason. My dad cheated on my mom multiple times during my childhood and when I was in high school. I think it's wrong and disgusting and I told myself that if my future husband ever did that to me, it would be over in a heartbeat. My husband and I have been married for almost two years. For the past six months, I've kind of suspected him of having an affair. There were small red flags here and there, and I had an overall gut feeling. I brought it up to him a couple times before, and he denied anything. So, with no solid proof, I let it go. Well last night, I fell down the stairs and hurt my ankle really badly. My husband was gone, because he said he had to run to the office quick to sign some papers. I called and texted him and no answer. Unable to drive myself to the hospital, I had to wait it out until he got home. One hour turned into two then almost three. I began to worry, because he is usually pretty good about answering my texts slash messages, and I knew he would respond and rush home if I was hurt. Finally, he came home and apologized that he had got caught up at the office, and had just seen all the missed texts and calls. He rushed over to pick me up off the couch, and right away I could smell perfume on him. I recognized it immediately, and just knew my suspicions were correct. It was our family friend's perfume. On the way to the hospital, I just sobbed and sobbed. Partially because of my physical pain, but mostly because I was so angry and felt so stupid. At first he denied it, then admitted it was true. He didn't want to upset me more, so told me we'd talk about it once I got checked out, and was feeling a little better. At the hospital, I literally laughed out loud when the doctor told me my ankle was broken, and I'd need to stay off my leg for a couple months, but, luckily it looks like you have a wonderful husband who will help and take care of you. I'm so disgusted. The thought of him messing around with her while I was at home in pain unable to walk or drive myself to the hospital, takes it to a new level for me. I needed him and he wasn't there. He acts like he wants to take care of me now. If he cared about me, he wouldn't cheat on me, period. I have so many questions and need answers, but for now, I'm just trying to process the shock and reality of it all. Now for the top advice. Wow that is so disrespectful to you and your marriage vows. You need to find out what is going on and why. He has totally lost your trust, and needs to explain himself to you. He needs to show total remorse and break all ties with this home wrecker. You should contact a lawyer to explore your options before you make any decisions. He needs counseling, and so do you. It should be individual counseling first, then marriage if you decide you even want to reconcile. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Good luck and God bless. Thank you. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Stay true to your convictions and find an attorney. A mean attorney, and file for divorce. Let the family know their acquaintance is fooling around with your husband. Separate your financial accounts. Read. Surviving Infidelity, Making Decisions, Recovering from the Pain, 3rd Edition Chumplady.com. After all, you have time to get many ducks in order while you're healing. Thank you for the advice. For now, focus on taking care of yourself physically and mentally. Not responding to my calls and texts, is a big trigger for me. No broken bones, but there were many times I needed my husband during his affair and his phone was mysteriously not working. Thank you. I'm going to focus on healing physically and mentally. I'm sorry you went through that, I can see how that would be a big trigger. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a